again and welcome to another talk organized by the Malta Airport Foundation discussing another interesting project that was funded by the Malta Airport Foundation. Today I have the honor of welcoming here Dr. Charlene Vella, who is a lecturer at the Department of Art and Art History at the University of Malta and also leads research initiatives on late medieval and Renaissance artworks. Together today, we shall be discussing the research, restoration and conservation of a project called the Triptych of the Madonna del Soccorso, which was actually completed with the support of the Malta Airport Foundation. Hello, Dr. Vella, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. And let us know a bit about this project. Can you briefly and simply explain what goes into the conservation and restoration of a work of art, the skills needed? Well, I am an art historian, so I get to work hand in hand with restorers and conservators. Mm -hmm. So I study paintings. I study paintings that are 500 plus years old. And when paintings are rather old, they tend to be overpainted. They would have some damage to the surface or the support. Mm -hmm. If it's a painting, it's canvas or, or panel. So we'll need to study it even in greater depth in a laboratory through means such as ultraviolet, infrared, x-ray, so that we understand how the painting is composed, made up. And that will help restorers and us art historians with the restorers understand the best way forward. The idea behind such a project is to remove any later interpolations on a painting. It would be over paintings that are hindering our proper understanding of the actual artwork. So if it was over painted two, three times, sometimes a painting, you wouldn't be able to see the original artwork. You would see the outlines of the composition and you know, if it's a human figure, you would know there is a, a Madonna and child underneath, for example, but you would not be seeing the original paint layer that the artist produced. So in my case, with the Madonna del Soccorso triptych, I have a Madonna harboring, you know, a, a soul in the form of a diminutive human form in her mantle and backing the devil away. There are actually two devils and a soul in purgatory on the same painting, on the same panel. And then you have two male saints and other scenes above. So what happened with this painting is that it probably suffered traumatically in the past. So a lot of the original paint layer was in some sections lost, especially on the mantle and it was given to past restorers to, to bring back to as close, you know, to the original as possible. Now with today's technology, we can do that in an even more sensitive manner. We can understand better also the artist's workshop techniques that he used 500 years ago to produce this painting, because this painting dates to the late 1490s, early 1500s. Is it hard to match colors, for example, and to do it as authentically as possible? It is, it, is a, it is a debate, you know, how to go about if there are areas of paint loss, which in fact we had on the mantle. Mm -hmm. We realized that on the blue mantle, which was originally gilded with stars and floral motifs, all of those were lost. So we agreed with the restorers to give an idea of the blue mantle and the drapery folds, but not to recreate too much in a technique that is called tratteggio. Mm -hmm. And of course, all of these different processes are recorded, documented. So if in future somebody is studying the painting, they would know what is original, what was added, what was removed in past, in past restoration interventions, such as what we just did now. Why are such works important in conserving our cultural and artistic heritage? Well, this triptych comes from an artist who was active in Sicily in Messina, Antonio de Saliba. Antonio de Saliba was nephew of the great Renaissance painter of the Quattrocento of the 1400s, Antonello da Messina, who masterminded the use of the oil technique in Italy, uh, the use of the chiaroscuro way before Caravaggio, for example. And he used a very realistic and naturalistic technique with which he portrayed figures. So in, re in a religious context, portraying figures naturalistically made the viewer, those praying before it, you know, feel closer to the spiritual being before him. So this painting, as I said, dates to the late 1490s, which means that it dates to 
three plus decades before the arrival of the Knights of the Order of St. John. So we know a lot about Maltese prehistory, about Baroque Malta with the arrival of the Knights, but we tend to not realize how really, how really strategically important Malta was even before the arrival of the Knights. In say, 500 years before the arrival of the Knights, Malta was under the Muslims, the Normans, the Swabians, the Angevins, the Aragonese, all from different cultures around the Mediterranean, all of whom left an influence on Malta, including art. So in this case, we have a Sicilian Renaissance painting being imported to Malta for a private chapel in Malta's medieval cathedral at Imdina. And this shows us how sophisticated Malta's gentry living in Imdina at the time was. Do tourists really appreciate our works and how does art of this caliber add to Malta's tourism product? I know that this uh, piece you are talking about is at the Imdina Cathedral Museum. So yes, tourists coming to Malta do realize how important Malta's culture and history are, the art. So they would visit the most important sites and visiting Imdina is an experience in itself. You know, the winding roads, visiting the cathedral, the Imdina Cathedral Museum. It really is a part of Malta. So they do appreciate, especially Renaissance art. Lately, there is this lure towards Renaissance art that has been attracting a lot of people. And how important was the financial support you got, such as that land by the Malta Airport Foundation in the completion of this project? Of course, my work at the University of Malta is supported by the university, but in order to see such a project come to fruition, I do need ex external funds. And the money that I did receive from the Malta Airport Foundation was instrumental. And I had this idea because I've worked on other paintings from the, by the same artist in Maltese public collections. But for this, I wanted to do something different, something special. As of late, uh, art historians have been studying paintings in greater detail by, by using methods that 3D methods, so analyzing, digitizing our work in three dimensions. Now, we may not think of a painting as being a three-dimensional object mm -hmm. because it's a flat two-dimensional object. But when you study it in 3D, you realize how many layers a painting is composed of. This has been done with Giotto, Giotto's altarpiece. You know, it's, uh, it's been used for Giotto, the great, uh, the great artist, and lately, the Victoria and Albert Museum has been 3D scanning se the seven out of 10 cartoons that Raphael produced for the Sistine Chapel, the tapestries that he produced for the Sistine Chapel, which still exist today. But the cartoons that he made to scale are being scanned because we realize how important this technique is today. And this is exactly what we did with the triptych of the Madonna del Soccorso. And I know that the plans were to put this online and make it accessible to the public for free. Do you think that online museums could actually replace physical museums or do you think they would make people more interested in visiting museum? I think certainly the latter part, making people more interested in visiting a particular museum. You would, for example, if somebody wouldn't have been to a particular museum, seeing what's available within the museum by having an online tour mm -hmm. you know that would make you entice you to want to go and if you're stuck at home because of a pandemic or any other reason these tools online tools are fantastic to be able to see what's available in public collections however the actual visiting a museum physically you cannot replace that experience right it's like going to a concert you have to it's a whole experience. In, in, the, in history of art, we speak of the Gesamtkunstwerk, the complete work of art. And seeing a painting or a sculpture in front of you, you know, in real life, in real life you know, you, you get that feeling that is all consuming, which, of course, seeing it on a screen has its perks because you can zoom in on a work of art, you know, digitally, but you cannot, you cannot replace the actual experience. Um, do you think that going to a museum would pick up more after pre-COVID times? Well, I would hope so. I mean, I myself, um, I'm, I'm desperate to travel and visit some museums, but in lieu of that, I have been visiting local, local museums, which are open. So the national collections, which are 
which are full of precious works of art that reflect our history, our culture, they are open for us to view. So that is what we're doing at the moment as, as a family. So. Any other projects in the future? Oh, I have another current <laughs> project ongoing and many, many more in the pipeline. <laughs> Well, we hope that the Malta Airport Foundation could help you in these as well. Thank, Thank you very much for joining us and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.